The Bible says, verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. And then in quotes, very important, by grace you are saved. And he continues to explain, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Praise the Lord. If you look at humanity, you will for sure see a need for salvation. And you don't need to go far for you to realize that truly you need salvation. You just stand in front of a mirror and look at that man in front of that mirror. And you'll see imperfections. And you will, as you are looking at yourself, you are turning yourself over when you are meditating on your life. You will realize, truly, truly, I need salvation. And this cry is in the heart of every man, born again and not born again. They all know that there is something wrong inside them. Cindy, we even have a proverb. Human is too. Because we know we are imperfect. We are wrong somewhere inside us. Cindy, and this may not even be because of something you have done, although you have done things that have been wrong, sins, things that have made you think, what manner of man am I? Amen. And when now you, you are tired of looking at your mistakes and your errors and imperfections, just walk outside. Go out, take a walk, look around. Look how poor you are, the fellow people are. How sick they are. Have you gone to town and seen how sick people are? Praise the Lord. Disabled, maimed, cripples. Praise the Lord. Depressed, mad, lost. If you stop looking at people and you start looking in nature and your surrounding, notice wrong things. Landslides, droughts, famines, earthquakes, buildings collapsing, sometimes because of negligence, some other times because of things happening in nature, storms, trees. But there is something wrong in our environment. There is something wrong in our nature. There is something wrong all around us. And that is why we need salvation. That's why we need saving. But even when we are going through all these problems and we can see there's something wrong, humans like to put in effort for themselves. We will come together, form UN, and form UNSDG goals, and we will form uh, NGOs, and we will form programs that are nice to try and help and combat all these things that we go through. Praise the Lord. Which also is an indicator that these things that we see around are undesirable. Sindio? But there is also something inside us driving us, telling us these things can be better. They can be bettered. Praise the Lord. And that war, that tug of war inside us, sometimes it leads men to 
try and put more effort in to try and save themselves from the situations they are in. But let me remind you one thing. If you are stuck in a web, the more you fight, the worse it becomes. The tighter the web holds you. Praise the Lord. Look at David's life. He had sinned. He had committed adultery. But in a bid, his own effort to make himself better, he ended up doing another sin of killing. Praise the Lord. Human effort only leads to worse things when you are in search of salvation. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying don't work uh, on your lives to make yourselves better. No, that's not what I'm saying. We are talking in the context of sin. When there is sin in your life, there is no human being capable of fighting sin on themselves. The very best, best, sorry, best human being created. He was created and God said he's, he's good. Yes, he was not very good yet until he had a helper. <laughs> yeah, he was just, when he was a single man, he was good. When now he had created Eve and brought him to Adam, he said, he, it is very good. Sawa, sawa. That best human being, when he was created, he did not have, there were not many women around to tempt him. Sindio? There was none, there was none in fact. There was nothing to steal because everything belonged to him. Praise the Lord. There was all the food he could eat in that forest, that, that garden, sorry. He could eat. And yet, he sinned. Praise the Lord. The best created human being failed. Praise the Lord. And Paul, putting himself in that situation of every human being, he cried asking, wretched man that I am in Romans 7. Praise the Lord. Who will save me from this body of death? That's the cry of every heart that takes time to look because they are wretched because of sin. Praise the Lord. And then we thank God there was a response to Paul's question. He himself said, but I thank God. He was not looking at himself anymore or any other man. We thank God. In prophecy, in heaven it was asked, who will go for us to take the good news of jubilee? And in typology, it was it was Isaiah who responded, but it was Jesus who was speaking, saying, I will go. Praise the Lord. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, <laughs> the Bible says, Sacrifices you have not desired and burnt offerings. And then it explains further and says, But a body you have prepared for me. So when Jesus was saying, I will go, God was telling Angel Gabriel, now go, talk to Mary. Uh, the word is spoken, Jesus will go, speak to Mary. And what did Mary say? Let it be done unto me according to your word. Hallelujah. And the body was formed. The body did not come from heaven, it came from earth. Praise the Lord. But the word... Jesus himself came from heaven, being sent. And when he came, he came saying, I have come to seek and to save the lost. Glory be to God, which was every one of us. We were both lost and in need of salvation. Glory be to Jesus. When he appeared in the scene, now John chapter 1, uh, verse 16 describes how he came. Chester had taught this last time. He said, we can read it. 
uh, verse 14. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when Jesus was appearing on the world scene, sin itself, Zambi, had ravaged us. We had been in this web trying to fight to get free for a long time. And in that long time, we have made a real, real mess. Praise the Lord. But when Jesus appeared, the Bible says he appeared full of grace and truth. Glory be unto God. And then the scriptures continue to explain that as many as received him, he gave the power. So he has come and you receive him. And then it explains now in the verse that I was reading, those who received him, the Bible says, of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Praise the Lord. You see, I, I described you as a housefly in a spider web. But Jesus has stepped in your world as, a, as another housefly. <laughs> in quotes, right? And he only came with his full, fullness of God in humanity. And the Bible says, if you receive him, you have received fullness of him. You did not receive a smaller Jesus because you are black. Praise the Lord. If it is not the fullness of him, it is not Jesus. If it is Jesus of Nazareth, who came from heaven through Israel, you received his fullness. And this fullness, the Bible describes saying, it is grace for grace. Hallelujah. It is grace upon grace. Glory be to Jesus. And that's why now Paul comes in. He's putting you now in line. He's telling us, by grace... Are you saved through faith? Hallelujah. This grace, <clears throat> so, so we, we, Chester taught us different uh, definitions of grace. But I would like you to think about grace in this manner. How did Jesus save us? How did Jesus save us 2,000 years ago? What did he do? He took your position where you are supposed to die on that cross. Praise the Lord. I love how we were singing at the center of it all. I was seeing three crosses. And at the center of those crosses, there was one cross. It was Jesus. But it was supposed to be yours. When you are thinking grace, think what Jesus procured for you on that cross. Praise the Lord. Why did Jesus go to the cross? For your sin. Amen. And you, you did not go. You had sin. You were supposed to die. Death was supposed to capture you proper, torment you, mangle you up rightfully because the wages of sin is death. But Jesus said, Rightfully, I will take their position. That's how you are supposed to think grace. So anything he procured for you through that cross is grace extended to you. Praise the Lord. So when you are thinking grace, think about the cross of Jesus Christ and you will be right with him because he rightfully took your position that you may take rightfully his position. Hallelujah. You see, it's grace upon grace and upon praise be unto God. When, when he took your position, it was mercy. And we have read in, 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 that God is rich in mercy. So when you are supposed to be punished, he did not punish you because God is rich in mercy. But did he leave you there? No. He switched his position with you as and you with his. Hallelujah. So that whatever he had became yours. Hallelujah. Grace upon, upon. This exchange did not happen when you got born again, juicy, juicy. Sindio? When did Jesus die? When did Jesus die? 2,000 years ago. Were you in existence 100 years ago? You were not. But he foresaw and foreknew you. When he was dying on that cross, he was saying, I'm dying for Dagi. And Jesus was dying for the whole world. But this grace on that cross, is it in operation in the lives of every person in the whole world? Why not? Ask yourself that question. Did Jesus die for the, whole world, the sins of the whole world? So why is his grace not working or not in operation in the lives of every human being, the grace for salvation, the salvation that he was procuring on that cross? Why is it not everybody is saved? Because you are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Grace does not operate on its own. It works with faith. So what now is faith? Jesus told a certain man in Mark chapter 5. Yeah. He, this man had a, an epileptic kid because of demon uh, oppression. And he told this man, only believe. Only believe. In Hebrews chapter 10, cha chapter 4, in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says, the word preached to them, the word of grace preached to them, did not benefit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith in them. Hallelujah. And the reason why not every man is saved, though Jesus Christ procured your salvation, the salvation of the whole world, is because not every man is responding in faith. Cindy, when they were in the desert, the Israelites moving to Canaan, and the snakes came, fiery snakes. And God told Moses, make a bronze snake and put it on a pole and tell the Israelites that whosoever looks on this snake shall live and not die. Don't start explaining how the poison will disappear and I don't know what will happen to white blood cells. They become, I don't know who are all those things. No. Just tell them to look. How it works is the mystery. How we are saved by just looking at the work of the cross, it's a mystery. But if you look, if you only look, praise the Lord, you will not die from the poison. And Jesus says, if you only look at the work of the cross, praise the Lord, only believe, because you are looking with the inner eye. Isn't it? If you only see the work of the cross, you will not die because of the poison of sin in your nature. Hallelujah. This looking, this sight, this response of looking, turning your eyes from all the things that are harming you, looking at the cross is a response of faith. Praise the Lord. Faith, faith is like... Uh, when we were studying biology, we used to have tropisms. We used to call them tropisms. We had geotropism, 
we had the photo tropism. So how do we explain tropism? Tropism is response to stimuli. That's how we used to call it. Yeah. When a plant experiences gravity in a certain way, it grows in another certain way. When a plant detects light coming from a certain direction, the plant responds towards faith is a tropism, if you allow me <laughs> to use that word. <laughs> it is your tropism. It is how you respond to the work of grace. Praise the Lord. When Jesus tells, uh, told the woman caught in the very act, go and sin no more. She went and sinned no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Why? Because she was responding to what Jesus had said. Praise the Lord. That is faith for you. And without this faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. So grace, I like how a certain preacher, I like, demonstrates it. He says, grace works through, uh, you are saved by grace through faith because grace works with faith. Amen. He says, grace is like sodium, pure sodium. And he says, faith is like pure chlorine. If you take sodium, pure sodium, you die. We bury you. If you breathe in pure chlorine, we will die quickly, fast. Praise the Lord. But without sodium chloride, which is the combination of sodium and chlorine, you also die. It's true, medically. You need sodium ions and chlorine ions in your body to, op to operate. And so is this spiritual scenario. If you take grace and grace alone, you fall into one ditch. And if you take faith and faith alone, like some, of, some men of God try to propagate, you fall into the other ditch. N neither ditch is good for you. You have a journey to travel. The only place you'll be safe is taking grace with faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. Grace is what Christ has procured for us. It is channeled to us through faith. So you are taking grace through a faith and opening to us. And Jesus Christ never asked his disciples to have great faith like the Roman centurion. He told them, if your faith as small as a mustard seed. Praise the Lord. That's all you need. Because the object of faith is not faith. See, at once. No. The object of faith is Jesus Christ. What he has done. Who he is. You are responding to him. Not to just things around you. To him. That is faith. Praise the Lord. So this salvation we have received is the grace of God extended to us through faith. And the Bible says that not of yourselves. <laughs> it is the gift of God. Praise the Lord. God is not asking you to pay a certain wage for you to receive his salvation. He's asking you only believe only what? And you receive it as a gift. God is the best giver, let me tell you. See, he made this whole wide world for himself. He placed wonderful animals. And all those wonderful things. Do you see how beautiful our world is? In the micro and in the macro. Yeah? And when he was creating the world, he said, I want man to rule in that world. Praise the Lord. He is the best giver. He gave his best when he was saving you. He says, he did not spare his own son. Praise the Lord. He is the best giver. And uh, I remember Chester when he was teaching us about the blasphemy, the sin of blasphemy. And he said, 
that the sin of blasphemy is not forgivable. Why? Because it is a rejection of the only thing that God has for you that could save you. You are too proud, you are telling God, through the death of Jesus Christ on a cross when he's naked, so you just save me another way. That's what you are telling God when you are rejecting his gospel, when you are rejecting Jesus. You are telling him, God, you know, me, I'm a bit special. Don't save me this way. Find another way. Like, uh, is he called Naaman? Yes, Naaman. When he was told by Elijah, hey, go and wash in the river. Because that's the way God has purpose to save you. And he was like so proud. Are there no cleaner rivers in Syria that I can swim in? Nikali ambuwa ingie Nairobi River. Na anajua kwao, that's where rivers come from. You know, springs. Eh? Mount Kenya Springs. So he wanted to be sent there. But did he have leprosy? Yes. Was it recommended for him to go into the River Jordan? Yes. And when he went, he was cleansed. Praise the Lord. Angejiambia, ah, me naenda Syria. I'll go and dip myself, not seven times, 14 times, or even 21 times, in the cleaner river. Would he have been healed? The grace of God is this. It looks, Jesus Christ on that cross looks so weak, so fragile, so disgusting. You know, the, the images we have, Jesus has a covering on his loins, but the truth is he was crucified naked. A savior, beaten, bleeding, naked, on a cross, saving me. It doesn't look majestic, glorious, but that is his grace. And if you only believe, you will be saved. Praise the Lord. That cross is the gift of God to us. Praise the Lord. Because that's why we get the beautiful exchange. He takes your position, you take his position. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And in verse 9 it says, not of works. Because we men know how to work. See you? Hey, men know how to work. I, we, we, up to date, we are still wondering how they made the uh, pyramids. Sindio? Because men know how to work. We've made roads that are crossing the seas. <laughs> We've made metal, heavy metal, flying. Praise the Lord. We know how to work. But when it comes to salvation, the Bible says it's not of works. Because when you work, we usually like to attach our names. Eh? Who invented penicillin? We have a name there. Alexander Fleming. Yeah. Who, who opened this building? Who, eh, eh, we, see you, you know what you are thinking. Those are works. Rightfully, they are works that happen duniani. But the work of salvation, praise the Lord, it is not by works. No man can boast. No man can prevent you from being born again. Praise the Lord. They will not say, he, my work of salvation is patented. It is not. You just look at the cross and rejoice that it was your position that was taken. And that's how you receive salvation. Praise the Lord. And even as I conclude right now, I'm, I'm going to invite Chester. If there's anyone who wants to receive that salvation here in our midst, I, I may not have received the position of Jesus. I am still nakatalia kitiyangu. I still want to, to, to save myself by doing this and that and that. If you want to receive this salvation by grace, just raise your hand up.